Hey guys, welcome. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about my October TBR. So all the books that are either set in October or are just giving me those Halloweeny vibes. Those are the books we're going to be talking about today. So without further ado, let's jump in. <laughs> trying really hard to keep my TBRs to a bare minimum and maybe give myself four or five just mood rings for mood rings <laughs> mood reads for each month in October. I think I did like just mood reading. I didn't even set a TBR. I had a bit of a TBR for September, but my main focuses from September till November are my 2024 TBR. So anything that's on my 2024 TBR cart over here, my 24 books in 2024, and I also had my 12 blind date with a book on my TBR cart. I am quite behind on that, so my main focus really is that but I wanted to give myself a little wiggle room especially in October where we have all the Halloweeny reads and the October crisp reads that I have just been craving. So I have a stack of about 10 books. I have a short story collection. One of the books is a graphic novel which I am so excited about. Coming up on number one is a book actually that I started some time ago. I already took the bookmark off because I plan on restarting and that is Night in the Lonesome October by Richard Lehman. I started this book, I don't know if it was last year or the year before that. I've been trying to read it for the past couple of Octobers and it's not that it wasn't interesting or I wasn't liking it because I was really much loving it, but this was a very slow burn of a book. And I think the whole premise is uh, that this guy goes out on a walk, his girlfriend just breaks up with him. His girlfriend was kind of like nasty to him, but he ends up going on a walk one night to sort of like clear his mind. And a slew of things happened to him in this walk. Um, and so I was at the beginning stages of the book. And again, it wasn't that I wasn't liking it, but it was just a little too slow for me. If I don't get to finish it this year, I think it's a book that I might plan on DNFing just because of the pacing. I don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna give it one more try and see what happens and see if I can finally finish it. Horroween, horror. <laughs> Horrorween is another book that I would love to get to by Al Sarantonio. Uh, I've had, I have all three books. I don't know if it's a trilogy or if it has like a spin-off somewhere, but I believe it's a trilogy. I own all three books um, and they've been on my TBR for a while and I finally want to read it. For untold ages, a dark presence has shrouded the small town of Orangefield. In addition to the plentiful pumpkins that gave the town its name, Orangefield is home to the dreaded Lord of Death himself, Samhain. Despite rumors of his existence and rare brief sightings, Samhain has long been content to leave the local inhabitants alone. But things are about to change. A boy goes missing. They think it's him and this town is all going crazy and they're trying to figure out where this boy is and if it was Sawin indeed who has taken the boy. Super, super excited to finally jump into this one. This one, although it's been on my shelves and on my TBR, I, it hasn't been on a set TBR just yet. This is the first time and <laughs> I'm hoping we won't see it again. Unless it's in a wrap up, of course. Fatal Fudge Swirl by Mary Ellen. This is the third and final book in the Ice Cream Shop Mystery, I think. I think it's a trilogy. Uh, I started reading this in September. I'm actually buddy reading this with my friend Tali. We have buddy read the whole trilogy together or we're about to finish the trilogy together but we started reading this in September she had things going on I had things going on and I was like hey look this book takes place in October why don't we push it and read it in October and she was down so that's what we're doing this takes place in the town of Pennyman Connecticut and we are following our main character Riley Rhodes and she goes to this town with her best friend because her best friend's mom has died. Her best friend's mom, I believe her name, I can't remember her name, but she has an ice cream shop and the best friend really doesn't want to close down this ice cream shop. So she's trying to find a way to get somebody to manage it. And Riley is sort of going through something at the time with her job and she decides to stay and help out her best friend, but she's loving her life there uh, in 
Pennyman Connecticut and the adventures with her continue. This is a cozy mystery and Riley Rhodes is our main sleuth. I love the setting to this whole entire trilogy. I love the town. In the first one we follow the death of Riley's brother. He dies in the first book and we're trying to figure out who murdered him. In the second book we are following the murder of a photographer. There's like this event that goes on and there's this art exhibit and the main photographer is found dead so we are on the hunt for that and in this one I don't know much of what happens but I think it's like the fall festival um, and it takes place in October. I believe there's like a romance novel being filmed in the town or something and something happens but I just love these so much. They're such a good time and for me on these cozy mysteries and I'm sure it's for everybody but for me the main thing is our sleuth I the sleuth and the setting the setting has to be perfection so and this one is perfection so I'm excited to jump into the third book of that cozy mystery next up is Halloween which is a graphic novel I believe I bought this one last year and I couldn't get to it which is kind of dumb every time I say I couldn't get to a graphic novel I feel like stupid because like how much time do you really need for a graphic novel? Like, come on, you go like this and that's it. You can read it. It doesn't take much time. So saying that I didn't have time for it, it just doesn't sound right. But I'm hoping to get to it this month. I'm hoping that I could read this one probably on Halloween night. We are following our main character, Gwen, and she has two best friends. But the two best friends are from this other world. Uh, they are from the Hollowlands, a fright-filled monster realm, which they can only leave as the year creeps towards uh, Halloween. But I think Gwen wants to go to this town and she's not allowed and she's trying to prove herself that she is in fact worthy of going to this town. So I think this is going to be a a hell of a fun time and I can't wait to jump in. I would love to get to the Miss Marple short story collection. This is the complete short stories. I was researching what was the first cozy mystery ever written. Come to find out the first full-length cozy mystery novel was written by our very own Agatha Christie and it is a spin-off from the Miss Marple short stories that she has written. And the first book is actually Night at the Vicarage. I already have it checked out from the library. It is checked out. It is waiting for me. But I would love to see the origins of Miss Maple, our very first cozy mystery sleuth. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Agatha Christie books for me are hit or miss. I don't know how I'm going to feel about the cozy mysteries. Are they all considered cozy mysteries? Like the Hercule Poirot, I, I don't know, Poirot, Poirot, however you say that. Uh, is that considered a cozy mystery? I know they're mysteries. Um, so I, I just want to see if there's something different because I've read a few of Hercule's books. Uh, those are my favorite, but I feel like they're kind of repetitive and I get bored with them. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen with this one because I would love to get to, or these stories, because I would love to get to Night at the Vicarage. I, I believe that's the name. Uh, just to see what that first cozy mystery ever was like. I'm co-hosting the book troupe in October, like how perfect the month of October. And we're reading Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman. I was so tickled when Gabby reached out to me uh, to co-host with her. I was like, uh, it's a Mallerman book, my favorite. And uh, yes, people say that this book is super creepy and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the hype is real. In this book, I think we have a girl and she has her family, but she also has another character or another person in her life that's called the other mommy. And I think the other mommy wants a little piece of her and because the other mommy keeps asking her like can you let me into your heart or something like that and this little girl doesn't answer I think it's a little girl but the more that she doesn't answer she sees that the other mommy is getting a little bit rowdy and she thinks that her family her real family's life is at stake or something I don't know but it sounds creepy anybody that sees another person and they're the only person I could see it especially like little kids like the other mommy that to me sounds horrific horrific so super excited I mean this cover I love love it so much but I cannot wait to jump into another Mallerman book because you guys know that I love him so this next book that's on my TBR is on my TBR because I pre-ordered this special edition book way before ever making the decision that this author was not for me. I've read like four or five of his books, but then this special edition arrives at my house like I don't know if it was last year or the year before that and I had completely forgot 
that I had ordered it but I'm going to try it because again it's a special edition it takes place on Halloween if I'm not mistaken and I'm hoping I'm hoping that I at least that this is the one that I love of this author because that none have worked and I'm kind of nervous but it is Demon Theory by Stephen Graham Jones I know please don't come for me I know everybody loves Stephen Graham Jones I love him as a person he seems very kind very nice I've seen him in interviews no qualms with him but just me and his writing we just don't dance well together so and it's fine not everybody's writing is going to be to my liking but I'm hoping I'm hoping that this one is the one because it's such a pretty addition number one it's a chunker but um, I don't know, I have a good feeling. Is that dumb? I think this takes place on Halloween night. Our main character gets a phone call that uh, he needs to come back to his childhood home. Something about the mom maybe being ill, but he hasn't been back home ever since his sister disappeared. And apparently he goes with six of his like uh, friends that they are in like med school or something. And what they find when they get to the house is like alarming and I don't know, shit happens. But I'm hoping that I like it. I mean, look at that cover. This shit is sick, sick, sick. It's stunning. But we'll see. I'll keep you posted. Uh, keep a lookout on my October wrap-up, I guess. Uh, the Wicked Unseen by Gigi Griffiths. This takes place on Halloween or around Halloween. There's this family that moves to this town, but apparently like the people in this town are probably religious. Those are the vibes that I'm getting because they're really like thinking that there's like this satanic cult hidden beneath the society or the community. And when our main character, the our main character, when she moves into this town, she has like a nose ring. She loves to her and her family has weed. They have Ouija boards. They just like horror movies and like this kind of stuff. Uh, and the people in the town just don't take too kindly to them because of this. They think that they are secretly in a satanic cult. And then a girl goes missing or, or our main characters like love interest goes missing and she becomes the main suspect because of how they look. And everybody thinks that again, there's a satanic cult underneath it all. But I, it seems really interesting. I feel like obviously it, it takes place on Halloween, but I feel like just those vibes, satanic cults and things like that, even if it wasn't set on Halloween, I think it's the perfect like October vibe. And it's, I kept going like this, meaning it's such a short book that I think it's going to be a quick and fun read. I have three more books on my TBR. Uh, this one, if I get to it, I get to it. If I don't, that's fine. Same thing goes for Miss Marple. Um, I don't plan on finishing all the stories in October. I might pick one up here and there. That really isn't like an October TBR. That's just a book that I would really love to read ASAP and it just so happens to be October. So, sir, why not? This one, if I don't get to read it, it's fine. It's not, it does not set in October. It's not set in Halloween, but the cover is like October Fest. And then this pumpkin here, it's The Wicked Way to Burn. It is a cozy mystery and it is a historical cozy mystery because it takes place um, 1763. It's the end of the French and Indian War and then there's like a mystery. But just the cover is giving me like the best vibes ever. It has to do with this man, this wealthy man that shows up in this town and he just like combusts on the side of the road and disappears. And everybody's like, oh my gosh well, who is this they begin muttering about witchcraft and the devil's hand casting suspicious glances at a local frenchman but charlotte who has a keen interest in human nature and her neighbor richard longfellow gentleman farmer and scientist have more earthly speculations about the merchant's disappearance was it murder or an elaborate scheme i just thought it would be fun uh just just because of the cover and again the whole witchcraft and devil's hand and stuff it just i feel like it lends itself perfectly for October. A Halloween Homicide by Tanya Capes. My bookstee, Eleni, surprised me with this. It just showed up at my door. It wasn't my birthday. I think it was like two weeks before my birthday and it just showed up at my door and I was like, wow, how cool. I just thought it was so sweet because she saw that I was like heavily getting more and more into cozy mysteries and she just decided to send it to me because she knows that I love Halloween. This is a holiday cozy mystery and I don't know much. It's spooky season in Holiday Junction and Halloween -y festival is a haunted great time like I want to be there right now. Holiday Junction really knows how to throw holiday festivals and it goes all out for Halloween, my kind of town. The week-long celebration includes a ghost walk of haunting tales, a hayride, carnival games, pumpkin carvings, and costume parties. The perfect combo. 
Violet Reinhammer has the perfect assignment. Represent the Junction Journal by attending all the fun festive activities and reporting on them. When Violet reluctantly goes on the ghost walk, she realizes the body that fell out of the fake casket is a real one and not a prop. She knows trouble is brewing. She puts on a sleuthing costume after someone she loves becomes Chief Strickland's number one suspect in order to catch the real monster. That sounds like it has Marcella written all over it and I can't wait to get all cozy and just read it. It's such a short one and I feel like it's just, I'm, I'm really gonna love our main character here. And here is the last and final book that I would love to try and get to this October. Trick or Deadly Treat. Lies. Lies. I just lied to you. You guys should not take that from me. This is book nine in the Fresh Baked Mystery. I would love to read book one. I already checked out the ebook for A Peach of a Murder, which is the first book in this series. Now, I was just going to go ahead and read book nine, but I would really love to get to know our main character for book one, and then I'll jump from book one straight into book nine. This is Halloween themed with a trick or deadly treat, so I would really love to get to this one in October, but like I said, I would love to get to know our main character better, and we have a dog companion in this one. Is that the right word, companion? I keep saying companion, that's what it is, a dog and cat companion. But we have a dog sleuth in this one, and I, I would really like to get to know him or her, from the beginning of the book and again our main character but I think I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with this one. When Phyllis and her best friend Carolyn are preparing for a baking contest. <laughs> oh I think that's why I love these books so much because they're all either about book clubs, food, and I'm about both of those. I'm all about those two things or baking which is food and <laughs> I just can't get enough of them. I really can't. <laughs> That's so dumb, bro. Her housemate Sam adopts Buck, an adorable Dalmatian who was hit by a car. <laughs> okay, so I guess I guess the dog premieres in book number nine. So maybe I, I don't need to go back. I would really like to know our main character, really. To thank local veterinarian Hank Baxter for helping the dog, Phyllis and Carolyn bake a batch of doggy treats for his other four-legged patients. But when they arrive at the clinic, the vet is in the process of being arrested for the murder of his wife. Convinced that the police are barking up the wrong tree, and that someone's been burying evidence, burying, burying evidence, Sam begs Phyllis to help find the real killer. Joined by Buck, the friends engage in a dogged pursuit of the murderer who will stop at nothing to muzzle them permanently. So I guess we don't see the dog. Uh, this is the first time we see the dog is in book number nine, but I'm gonna try and read book one. If I like it, then great. Uh, and then I'll jump into book nine, but I'm so excited. <laughs> so that's it, you guys. Those are all the books that I would love to get to in October or the majority of the books that I would love to get to in October. Let me know if you've created an October TBR and what's on it. And if you don't create TBRs, let me know just what's the one book you would love to get to in October that you know you're gonna read in October. Let's chat books in the comment section down below. As usual, all these books will be linked in the description box. They are affiliate links though, so keep that in mind. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.